G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and in today's video we are going to play a game of AFL Would You Rather. So if you're unfamiliar with how Would You Rather works, uh, usually, in, at least in my experience, there's a game you play with your mates and then they generally pose two scenarios at you and you've got to choose which one is the preferable one. Now, generally speaking, when you're with your mates, they usually throw two really unpleasant scenarios at you and you have to pick which one you would rather. So we're doing that today in an AFL context. So I took to Instagram and I asked you guys for your suggestions, much like I've done with the other videos so far this week. And you've thrown two scenarios at me and I have to pick which one I would rather. And there's some damn good ones. I'll, I'll give you guys credit. So I'm going to rattle them off one by one and give you my answers to them. Before I do so, guys, I can't help but notice that there was 61,000 different people who watched a video on the True Footy YouTube channel in the last 28 days. So that means that more than half the people that have watched the videos haven't subscribed to the channel. So if you could do me a favor, if you are enjoying the content and want to see more footy content, please consider subscribing. But without further ado, let's get into your Would You Rathers. So the first one is uh, the AFL, but it's 10 rounds like the AFLW, or a full 23 or 24 round season, but it's all AFLX. God, so these are genuinely both ridiculous. And I, I know that's the point of your question, Harry. Uh, I would probably still rather a 10 round actual AFL season than consign myself to watching AFLX for 24 rounds. So, I mean, AFLX it could work if it's like in conjunction around the AFL and if it's done in a, in a better way. Uh, but that being said, it would, no, no, absolutely not. The next one is, would you rather Fremantle win three premierships in a row or West Coast finish last in 2024? Absolutely give me West Coast finishing last in 2024 because there's a good chance it's going to happen anyway. I would not choose, you know, possibly finishing second last only to see Fremantle win three premierships in a row. Are you joking? The next one is, lose a grand final by a point or 100 points. This is tough. Uh, I have seen us getting smashed in the grand final before. I was a little bit young in 05 to really care that we lost by four points. I'd probably rather get smashed, to be honest. That way, it doesn't the heartbreak isn't so much. There's another similar one saying, lose a grand final by 10 goals or a kick after the siren. Yeah, I'd probably rather the bigger margin than have it be that close. Jacob Phillips says, would you rather see Caddy take Stringer's spot based off Stringer's current history? Uh, no, I mean, I love Nate Caddy. I want to see him play early. That being said, I think for Essendon's immediate hopes, a fit and firing Jake String is what they need. I also know that he's 29 and in a contract year. That might motivate him. I've got a feeling we might see a big year from Jake Stringer. The next one is 20th team based in Northern Territory or third WA side. What would I rather? Uh, yeah, I don't think I really want a third West Australian side. I think it would probably be a little bit more viable than a Northern Territory team. I have my doubts about that. That being said, what would I rather see? I'd rather keep a third team out of WA. So let's go with Northern Territory. Team constantly in the top eight, but will never win a premiership or a team in the bottom three for 10 years. Oh, both of those are horrifically unpleasant. And I'm gonna have to say, I'd rather see my team in the bottom three for 10 years than to have the guarantee of never winning a premiership because ultimately that's what this is all about. If I have to wait 10 years, sure, but at least we have a chance. Whereas yeah, finishing sixth, seventh, eighth, even second, um, would not be as good if you know that you can't win a premiership. Corey Belcher says, would you rather the Eagles finish 18th for the next five years and win three premierships or win the next two premierships? Is three premierships that much better than two? I mean, I wouldn't know because I haven't seen one team of mine that I support, as in West Coast, I haven't seen us win three premierships in a, in a like short space of time before. So I don't know how much better the third premiership is. Uh, that being said, I'm going to answer this in a more practical way. And I'm in the UK for at least the rest of this year. And if the Eagles win the premiership this year, not that that's possible, really, um, I wouldn't be there to see it. So I would, I would probably delay the gratification, have five bad years, but then win an extra one. Bonnie Lewis says, support the Suns or support Brisbane. Uh, I think that's fairly easy with all due respect to Gold Coast fans. You know, I think being a Brisbane fan is a bit of an easier ride, to be honest. Would you rather be the GOAT in a shit team or shit in a good team? Uh, but still good enough for the best 22. I would I would rather be a no-namer in the best 22 of a good side that was capable of winning premierships because I think I think that would motivate me a lot more rather than the Gary Ablett Jr. at Gold Coast model. Like, I, I, I wouldn't... That doesn't appeal to me as much. Brad Close versus Ben Ainsworth. Who would you rather? Um, okay, so when I first read this, I thought you meant Brayden Ainsworth. <laughs> so I was like, what? Is this a joke? Um, ben Ainsworth... Uh, I would probably go Ben Ainsworth, to be honest. Um, from what I've seen, I think he's a bit of an underrated gun forward mid, to be honest. Um, not that Brad Close is bad, but I would. I think Ben Ainsworth is better. Have a 1v1 footy match with Barry Hall or have a 1v1 rugby match with Gordon Tallis? Now, I had to Google who Gordon Tallis was. I really know nothing about rugby. And he looks like a scary man, but so is Barry Hall. And I would at least rather play the sport that I know how to play. You know, rugby is a lot more 
just run into each other. Whereas footy is a little bit more nuanced than that. It's a little bit less, you know, just crash and bash. That being said, I'd get annihilated in both instances. 27 Dusty or 2016 Dangerfield. Oh, this is tough. This is tough. I'd probably go Dusty. Uh, it's hard to justify. I just think, I don't know. It probably just appeals to me a little bit more with his ball use. But Dangerfield was pretty damn exciting. Um, I feel like Dusty can do some of the things Dangerfield can. Not He can't quite explode in the same way. But Dangerfield's less capable of doing the crazy shit that Dusty does. Um, I'd probably rather go Dusty, but it's it's line ball. Those, we saw three amazing individual seasons, 15, 16, 17, with Dusty, Danger, and Fife. Have your team kick to win after the siren or hope the opposition misses after the siren to hold on? Uh, I have um, experienced both of these things. And I would say that seeing your team win the game by kicking a goal after the siren is way more exciting than hoping the other team misses. It's not quite as good. Uh, I think back to Ballantyne in that derby. I don't think I really had that same excitement. It was more just like, like dread and then relief, if that makes sense. Jono Steven says, would you rather be a Bombers or a Hawks supporter right now? So in terms of the immediate hopes for 2024, I think Essendon's should have more reason to finish higher than Hawthorne. But if we're factoring in the success of the Hawthorne Footy Club, the people they've got there, I do have faith in Sam Mitchell as a coach. I think longer term, it's probably... I'm probably more confident Hawthorne's going to be there. And that's kind of just based on prior reputation, right? Like Essendon have promised a bit in the past. But that being said, I don't think Essendon without their hope. It's just the track record of the footy club makes me less confident than Hawthorne becoming good and potentially winning the flag, if that makes sense. So maybe Hawthorne just in that sense. Josh Stone says Betts or Cyril. And he says Cyril. Tough one. Quite different players, really. Um, Betts was much more of a prolific goal kicker. Cyril was more damaging down the field. Probably Cyril. Oh, but it's so line ball. I love them both, to be honest. They were very good players. Betts, I've really enjoyed watching. Um, but Cyril, we also factor in the length of the career. Are we factoring that in? Because Cyril had a shorter career. Um, Betts did pull on the goals, but maybe Cyril just for talent. Oh, that's tough. That's a real good one, Josh. Would I rather take one generational kid or three or four 7.5 out of 10s in a draft? I think this is completely contextual. I think it depends where your list is at. If you've already had a few cracks at the draft and you've, you know, you've gotten, um, you know, a few top end talents, then maybe it's more makes more sense to get like four best twenty two players in there that are good players. But conversely, like with West Coast, with where they were at going into this draft, we we needed quantity. We needed best twenty two players, but we also needed to form the general nucleus of absolute star talent in the midfield to build around as well. So I think we, upon reflection, I'm, I'm happy with the route we took and we can build with role players around that. Leo King says 2016 Josh Kennedy or 2023 Charlie Kerno. This is a goodie, a goodie, and I can't help but be biased here. But I think, I think on quality, it's pretty similar. What are the two differences between them? I think Charlie's certainly more athletically gifted. The highlight reels are probably similar. Charlie's probably a better contested mark, probably takes a lot more specky marks or like impressive marks. Where Kennedy has him, I think, as a proven, um, like a set shot, like the, the difficulty of set shots that Kennedy would kick with consistency probably sets him apart. And I think the clutch factor also makes me want to go with JK. He was an unbelievably clutch player. Um, and I am biased, so I'll say JK, but you know, I can see people going either way. Prime Dusty or Prime Fife? And in brackets, no Eagles bias. I still think Dusty, to be honest. The thing with Fife, right? And when I say Prime, I think in 2015, that first 10 rounds, he was insane. Like, amazing. And that was when Fremantle, I think, won their first nine. Uh, maybe, maybe it was longer than that that he was good. But I do remember he had a sternum injury at the back end of that year and he fell off. Uh, so his 2015 season wasn't as... It was a lot more condensed, like his best football. And is that more impressive? Maybe, because he still won the Brownlow pretty easily from memory. I think Pritis came second. I don't know. I think Prime Dusty is my favorite, but I, I can't help but probably just err on the side of like, Dusty's the most entertaining of the three, in my opinion. Um, but it, it's pretty lion ball. I'd say Dusty, though. And, and Prime Dusty, that Prime also went for a lot longer than five. Ashton Hurd says, have the career path uh, slash success slash accolades of Gaza Ablett Jr. or Buddy Franklin? I like this question because... It actually struck me while reading it that they do have a very similar sort of story. Like, both of them won two premierships with their original club and then moved north 
and you know had less success. Buddy played in maybe two Sydney Grand Finals, but didn't win them. Gary Ablett Jr. played in one more Grand Final, but it was for Geelong. So the, the career path success slash accolades are all very similar. I, I can't really split them. I mean, I'd probably, if I was a player, I'd rather be the midfielder. I don't know why. I just that was probably where the, that's the sort of player I'd want to be known for being, if that makes sense. So maybe Gary Ablett Jr. But like. Yeah, you, can, you can't really split them. Mitch says, Frio beat the Eagles after the siren in a grand final, or the Eagles get three weight straight wooden spoons. Uh, absolutely the wooden spoons. Do not even just completely miss me with Fremantle beating us in a grand final. <laughs> and we already got one wooden spoon down, so this is just two more. I, I think I'm desensitized to wooden spoons, but Frio beating the Eagles after the siren would just be like, for the rest of my life, that would still be something that gets brought up. Riles Macca says, Brownlow medalist, but never a premiership player or vice versa. Uh, definitely give me the premiership. I think um, I think it, everyone kind of says that in the AFL and sometimes it gets cliche, but I do think winning on grand final day would trump being a Brownlow medalist for me. Martin Reed says, West Coast are one win away from the eight. Would you rather play Geelong in Geelong or Brizzy at the Gabba? This is a great question, Martin. Um, so the Eagles famously suck at the Gabba. We famously suck in Geelong and we famously suck at Sid in Sydney against the Swans. All three of those would have been viable shouts. I think the chances of us beating Brisbane at the Gabba are just slightly higher because I do think when the conditions are dry there, we've played well there before. We just seem to suck as soon as it gets a little bit humid. And, and if you ignore the fact that Brisbane are just a way better side, obviously, but so are Geelong. I just don't think even on our best day, we're a chance in Geelong. Um, so I would have said Geelong's the, the least favourite. I'd probably go Sydney next, and then I would have gone Brisbane at the Gabba. We're still a sneaky chance there when we're a good team. Not right now, but generally speaking. Ash says, would you rather a shit de decade for the Eagles or support Collingwood for one year? Uh, yeah, I, I reckon I could switch teams to Collingwood for one year to mean that West Coast didn't have a terrible decade. Um, yeah, as ridiculous as that sounds, I would just be a fake Collingwood supporter. And then, you know, for the 12 months, I'd be like, yes, West Coast, get all the draft picks. AFL Legend says, day or Twilight Grand Final? Definitely day. And I don't really have any real justification for that. I just like day Grand Finals. Make a Grand Final, but lose, or miss out on the Grand Final, but your team loses. Uh, I think I think there's a grammatical error writing this, but I think I, get, I know what he means. Like, make a Grand Final and lose, or miss out on the Grand Final. I think I'd probably still rather make the Grand Final. To be honest, I, I don't think there's enormous shame in losing the grand final. Is it emotional? Sure, but I think there's, there comes some pride with making the grand final. I'm glad we made it in 15 and didn't lose to North in the prelim. Um, there probably also would have been a sense of like, what if? You know, if we'd been upset by North in the 2015 prelim, I would have thought, oh, you know, we, we beat Hawthorne in the first week of the finals. We could have beat them in the grand final, but now we know. <laughs> now we know. Uh, Brock Ten says, "Would you rather have a 2015 Nat Five or a 2020 Lockie Neal?" Uh, Nat Five, I think. Uh, nothing, no disrespect to Lockie Neal. I just think that 15 Five was transcendent. Like that was um, top tier, absolute top tier. Gold Coast Young Court or Frios? Ooh, tricky one. I do think probably Gold Coast on talent, on talent. But it's uh, partly because, like you know, they've got Ben King, who's a little bit more proven than say his. Fremantle counterpart, who's Jai Amos, who also looks like an absolute gun. But I think F F Gold Coast just bats a little bit deeper. That being said, Caleb Sarong is probably better than Raul and Anderson, in my opinion. Might be controversial that. I do think that, though. But marginally, marginally. Like, it's not a big gap between him and Anderson. That being said, I, I probably have more faith in Fremantle's young core becoming something. Gold Coast have a chance, but I think Fremantle has at least been there before. 2015 Fife or 2016 Danger, or probably 2015 Fife in the first half, the second half of the year he fell away. Would you rather be Eagles or North from a rebuild perspective? This is a tough one. So again, there's some nuance to this. Are we talking about who would I rather be right now or like who has the most list talent? Because I've got this belief and I don't know if it's justified. I suppose this will all play out. But I have this belief, like if you're a big successful club with a proven track record of like success, then you're probably not going to stay down as long as a team who probably doesn't have that track record. And with North, I mean, to be fair, I mean, North, they're a small club by membership, but they are relatively successful. They were a great team in the 90s and pretty competitive up until like 2018, but they have fallen away in a bad way. So I do think, I guess what I'm saying is the longer you stay down, the less faith I have, you're going to bounce up. And so I just have a little bit more faith that West Coast, even if they have less talent, will come back. North will come back too, but I, I don't know. It's hard not to be biased there. However, let's flip this though. If you're talking about pure list talent, I do think North have some pretty insane talents on their list. Like 
LDU, George Wardlaw, Harry Sheasel, Cobley McKercher. You can't rattle off the same quality of names on West Coast lists. So it depends on how you frame the question, but it's a good question. Hawthorne's current list or Essendon's current list to build a dynasty. This is, this is again, these are real good. These are real good. So if we're just talking list talent, I think Hawthorne's, like in terms of under 24 talent, like Will Day and Mitch Lewis are probably two of the first names I'd pick before I'd really think of anyone clearly on Essendon's list. However, Essendon probably have more players. Oh, there's also John Newcomb. Essendon probably have more players that I think if they explode could really be something. Your Sardis, your Hobbs, um, your Perkins to some extent, uh, Nate Caddy now as well. So if we're talking dynasty, what we're talking about is like a group of unbelievable players that you can continue to shift the list around and, and build around over a period of time. And maybe Essendon's talent is probably more higher potential. That being said, it's a different question to say who is more likely to go on and be a successful team because I think with Hawthorne's track record, like I'm talking about before, maybe they're more likely. So again, it depends on the exact context. I have more faith that Hawthorne could go on and really be a team. Round zero or an overseas round games in the US, UK, New Zealand, and Asia. Uh, Games overseas wouldn't really do anything for me. I'm happy with the opening round fixtures like at least they're good games um you know looking at last year the, the rivalries there eagles bad boys cousins Kerr, gardner and chick versus the rat pack from collingwood swan didak and shaw uh well cousins is probably the best player there in my opinion swan maybe second i i, I am biased so i think Kerr is up there too but shaw and didak are a lot better than gardner and chick so it's a tough one i don't even know if you meant like quality of player and there's also four players versus three players there. It's a little bit tough. I'll just say Eagles to be biased. A decade straight of Eagles nailing first rounders or a decade of nailing for the rest of draft. I think we've done a pretty good job with our recent first rounders. And I think I think you can probably pick up more value if you nail the rest of your draft at this point. But it depends. Maybe two years ago, if you'd asked me, I would have said a decade of nailing first rounders. Gross. Uh, West Coast three peat wooden spooners or Frio three peat premiers. Uh, wooden spoon, definitely give it to me. Because wooden spoons aren't the end of the world. I'm desensitized now. We'll be fine. Cousins or Judd in their prime, definitely Judd. I think some Eagles romanticize Cuz a little bit because Cuz didn't betray us in the same way, but I think Judd was better. Nick Larky or Tex, I think Tex is still the better player right now, but Larky's way younger. She's or Ashcroft is tough. That is tough. I find she's all a bit more entertaining, but. He has played an easier role. Ashcroft did come in as a midfielder and, and really held his own. So they're both going to be Jets. And I do think Sheasel will be a bit more of a forward midfielder. I'd probably say Shees, but by the barest of margins. LDU at his best or Jack Steele at his best? So at his best, Jack Steele's best has been better than LDU's best. But I, I believe in the top end potential of LDU. So I'm inclined to say that. But if we're talking retrospectively, who's been better? Jack Steele. Missing a goal after the siren or not get a disposal and never play a match again. Oh my God. <laughs> I'd probably rather miss a goal after the siren. Depends how bad the, the shot is, I guess. Be an unstoppable forward or unstoppable defender. There's way more glory in being an unstoppable forward and probably more impactful too. Would you rather Freeman or beat you in the grand final or have Byron Pickett try and take you out? Oh my God. <sighs> That's a doozy. Uh, I guess bring it on, Byron Pickett. <laughs> MCG or Optus Stadium? Um, I love both. Optus Stadium is a nicer stadium, but the MCG is bigger. The atmosphere is, well, they're both damn good. Like the way that Optus's acoustics work, it is still really loud in there. Uh, I don't know. For a match day experience, it probably is Optus, but for big games like grand finals, MCG. And the, finally, this is one of the toughest questions of all. Jesse Craven has asked Connor Rosie or Sam Walsh. <laughs> Connor Rosie. At this current point in time, you know, just ha- had a better year than Sam Walsh, and maybe he's just edging in there. Probably as a forward, a little bit more dynamic. Sam Walsh does give me the vibe that he's just like, if he stays fit for 10 years, we're talking two or three round lows because he's just going to be so consistent. And he's got that Joel Selwood kind of champion mindset. I don't know the guy, but it's just an outsider looking in. So you could go either way. I'd probably, probably rather Sam Walsh, but I think Rosie has the potential to pull off an individual season that is more likely to transcend like what everyone else is doing more. Like he's more likely to produce a season that will be talked about for a while uh, because he's just such a dynamic and exciting player. Whereas Sam Walsh isn't not exciting, but it will be Mr. Consistent and probably pick up a couple of Brownlows, I reckon. I wouldn't, it's not a bad bet. Sam Walsh to win two Brownlows in his career. Like the Lockie Neal model, I think he can do that. 
Anyway, guys, this was a longer video than I intended, but hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments any others that you can think of. If you enjoy this concept, we can do it again, uh, probably in the preseason at some point. But hope you're enjoying the content. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.